I would like to introduce uh, uh, Mark Smith. Mark, as it turns out, and I had about an hour and a half coffee yesterday, and it was really good to get to know him better. We both learned that uh, we're both originally from Detroit. So with Ken and McCoy here, we've got a Detroit, a Michigan friendly uh, group. Um, Mark uh, endured my uh, Disco 101 uh, uh, elements with some charts and spreadsheets trying to further familiarize him with uh, our growing group of about 12,000 residents uh, downtown. Mark, uh, I think a very interesting guy with an architectural background, passionate about Siesta Key, uh, has served in uh, the Siesta Key community and the Chamber of Commerce. He was very active in the uh, Girl Scouts of uh, Coast and very active in their building program. So um, I've seen, watched Commissioner Smith in action uh, on occasion at the county. And it occurred to, I can't remember if this was Ken or some of these ideas to potentially invite a county commissioner, our county commissioner, to speak, further uh, acquaint him with us and where we have uh, some shared interest and in, in goals. Uh, Mark and I spent a fair amount of time talking about mobility, connectivity, transportation alternatives, which the county is running kind of lead on. We talked about TIF and some of the performing arts center parking needs to the extent that there's an overlap between county responsibilities and so forth. So I've asked Mark, uh, as is common practice, to maybe speak 10 or 15 minutes and then another 15 minutes of uh, question time. So let me turn it over to you, sir. Okay. Welcome, welcome to DSCA. Thank you. Uh, David, I can take my entire speech, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Uh, I will let you know that I am an architect, and uh, I did run for county commission in 2010 against Nora Patterson uh, when we were in a recession. And uh, so my phone stopped ringing sometime around 08, as uh, folks weren't looking for any architectural work. Uh, and so uh, a bit naive, I said, okay, uh, running against an incumbent. Uh, I tell folks uh, running against an incumbent, it's easier to uh, take out your own appendix than to take out an incumbent. Uh, and so, uh, but it was, uh, I'm a Republican and, uh, and I got 44% of the Republican vote countywide against the lady that had been in office for 20 years. So, uh, I think that's what, uh, encouraged folks to ask me to run this time, which of course, again, I said, no, again, why would I want to do this? I'm an architect on CSTP. I have a beautiful wife and, uh, uh but, uh, Christian Ziegler uh, had uh, decided not to run, although he's keeping a secret for a long time. Um, and um, so I said, okay. I, I thought that uh, having an architect on the board would be a real service to both the county commission and to the citizens of Sarasota because of my background in, in planning and, and design and permitting construction. And so, um, I, I feel I bring something to the table. Sorry, I didn't mean to have my back to the folks here. I'm not sure where the camera is, but uh, but anyway, uh, it's it's worked out well. It's been an experience. Uh, I've been on a few, well, won four votes, but uh, as I've said, I, I can't help it if the other four are wrong. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I I uh, you know what, what's amazing. I grew up in Sarasota. Uh, my family moved here from Detroit uh, in '63. Eight. And so I've grown up here. Um, so it, it means a lot to, to represent you all. Um, and uh, we've seen an incredible amount of growth. Uh, we are literally victims of our own success. Um, I mean, downtown uh, in the 70s, I don't know how many of y'all were here then, but uh, you know, it was. Uh, you could roll a bowling ball down Main Street and not hit anybody. Um, and um, and it's really because of the condominiums and you all living here and those before you that revitalized downtown. Uh, it 
because the shops and the restaurants and all they they need they need you all. Uh, you know, it's a very symbiotic relationship. And um, and as we all complain about congestion and all, um, those of us that remember the '70s in the mall, the mall, you know, the mall that was a big thing in the '70s. The mall, you know. <laughs> Uh, and that's what sucked the life right out of downtown. Uh, now it's the reverse. You know, downtown is sucking the life out of the malls, and now the malls are uh, being closed down and, and used for other purposes. So you all won that tug of war, and congratulations, because uh, every great city has a great downtown. But with it comes the, the challenges uh, of mobility, affordable housing, um, and and that's uh, I will say that I believe the count of the city, excuse me, is is ahead of the county as far as addressing affordable housing. Um, and I commend you all for that. The um, it's tough uh, because you know we I'm a capitalist and you know, I believe in the market, but I also understand that if we don't, and I brought this up at AS against it talking to developers that are planning out east. I asked them, uh, uh, do you have housing for the folks who are going to be working? And they're usually silent on it. Um, and John Thaxton, who you may be aware of, uh, he has a great formula, something, something like for every what's it, 200 homes, you need 10, 10, 10 affordable working housing you know, and I and I brought this up before to developers, saying, "Well, why why not? Why not? Why not have a section um, that is affordable? It, it doesn't. These are folks that are working in your community. I mean, if if you want a carpenter or a, a plumber or just the folks working at the local market, they're right there, and and having your workforce there that would make them part of the community, and they'd be proud to be part of that community." Um, and I said, you could have a, a corral, you might say, an area that you could park the, 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 the trucks. We don't want to see the electrician's truck in the parking lot. But, you know, somebody that's just the beach where we have a main yard, we park the vehicles there. And then you know, when the day starts, they get their cars and, and they'd be right there. I mean, what we're, uh, Esther and I are fortunate enough to uh, live on Siesta Key. I bought back in, in at the end of 93 when uh, you could get a, a three bedroom, two bath house with an in-ground pool, walking distance to Siesta Beach for $155,000. <laughs> uh, that was then, this is now. <laughs> uh, I, I told us we can't afford it, but, uh, but anyway, but what that does is it, it takes the traffic away. If you have the folks you need living right there, they're not, going up and down Clark Road or Bee Ridge or on the interstate, coming from Manatee County or down south. And one of the one of the, the items that you probably, or issues that you all experience, like we do on Siesta Key, we call it the island break. Uh, if, you, if you need something done, like a refrigerator fixed or, you know, anything, we pay the island rate, you know, it's uh, the time it takes to come out. There's, there seems to be a bit of an upcharge uh, but all of North Sarasota County is because all the construction down south, in Welland Park and Northport, the folks that were our workforce don't need to leave there anymore. And then Bradenton has got, you know, the Manatee County is going crazy up there. And so the workforce doesn't need to come to Sarasota. So we're stuck in the middle, you know, those of us in. Sarasota County. So it's extremely important that we have this affordable housing um, and, and, and make it part of the fabric of our community uh, because uh, they're, they're not looking for a handout, they're just looking for a place to stay. And, and uh, our youth, our daughter, uh, came to Washington, D.C., came down, thought she'd like to move, to move back to Sarasota. She grew up here, graduated from Riverview. She couldn't find anything. And she had a good paying job. Um, and so she actually moved back to Washington, D.C. 
which I thought was unusual. But uh, but in Washington D.C., they have apartments and condominiums that are geared towards the younger people. They have activities. They have a, a common floor for for folks that are working, like my daughter, however uh, old. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so we need housing like that. So, um, that will cater to the younger folks because we need we need them and as as you say uh, shared with me david all the um all, all the uh youth and the, the that we don't have uh we're, we're, we're i'm uh, i'm 68 and apparently i'm the average you know and so it's uh that's a little scary uh when you think about it uh, and so uh, and the mobility thing I wanted to mention is David had brought this up to me about um, having a, a, a perhaps a shuttle or a something like I ride going around the condominiums and, and linking everyone together. I went up to Tallahassee. Um, uh, I'm on the uh, Florida Association of Counties Board of Directors. And I met with one of the secretaries of the Department of Transportation and I, I said to them, thank you, Dr. Jim. Um, that downtown Sarasota, because of its growth, because of all the folks that are here and the folks that are coming online, that a a system, a, a low speed vehicle type uh, service that would basically circulate through the through the downtown area was needed. Uh, we have Sarasota County has on demand, which has been very successful and. In Longbow Key, uh, had petitioned the county, uh, both counties, actually Sarasota and Manatee, uh, to extend it uh, to, into the Manatee County side of, of uh, Longbow Key, and, and we're just now doing that. Uh, but this is a different, different animal. This is basically uh, a system that would be here. It's like I said, somewhere down the road. Anyway, that the I was very encouraged to hear from the Florida Department of Transportation that there may be a grant in there for us um, to pursue that would have some startup money that might keep this thing going for three years until it, it until it catches on. So we're going to pursue that uh, on the county side of transit. So um, so I think that about covers it. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Yes, sir. Peter. Could could you just speak to a minute the uh, county's position on mental health services in the county? I know we ran into a situation earlier on where it seemed arbitrary and capricious that the uh, uh, council just <clears throat> did away with it for a while and then had to reapply it and go back. And we're very concerned, at least some of us on this committee, and we have a homeless outreach committee, sure. uh, that that affected that group very severely. Well, uh, you, you may recall that I was the one. Uh, <laughs> that when I run for re-election, that's going to be my slogan. I'm the one. Uh, <laughs> then I'm the, and, uh, the losing end on a number of votes. Uh, mental health is a serious issue, and and um, I'm trying to put this delicately, and because we are being recorded. Uh, <laughs> that um, I believe that the outcry that the county commission felt uh, after um, basically we shut off funding to a lot of folks. And in, in my review of, I, I mean, I'm, I've been on the job for a year now, and at that time I was less than that. So I, I was trying to like catch up a bit. And um, what a, what I found is that when reviewing all the different agencies, um, all the different health and human service agencies, and then and then the ones that didn't get their funding, that it's a it's a team effort. Um, it's it's you know what they say a, a chain is as strong as its weakest link, and the county commission successfully took links out of the chain. Um, if you read their applications, they talk about one of the questions is how do you work with other uh, 
services and uh, you know what makes you different and what makes you similar and and you could see how um, they each re rely on each other because you know some some may be helping teens, others more families, others more adults, others dealing with housing, others dealing with food, you know all the different aspects of human services and and I believe strongly that the reason you have advisory boards is take your advice. Uh, one of the, and, and, and Ken may agree with this, is that when you become elected, it doesn't make you suddenly smarter, but you're put in a position to make decisions that uh, in some cases, maybe you are outside your educational background, your personal background, your life. So, I mean, as an architect, I rely on my consultants, the engineers, the surveyors, you know, architects know a little about a lot of things and engineers know a great deal about a small perspective. So you rely on your consultants when you know, we're designing and creating. Well, I feel the same way as a county commissioner. I don't know everything, uh, uh, but I know what I know, and, and so when you have folks on your advisory boards that are experts in the field, I take that seriously. And so I believe the approach should have been to uh, let everything go through with the funding that was agreed to. And then if you want to revise the system, you do it in the off season, you might say, and get ready for the next time instead of changing the rules in the middle of the game. But I, 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 I believe we're getting there. Um, again, this is very recorded, but I'll, what I've told the folks that from the different agencies, um, the best way to get something approved is to take the approach of how you're going to save the taxpayer money. Um, is heaven forbid if government was supposed to help people. So <laughs> if you just say we're supposed to save the taxpayer money, you got a better shot. Getting your program. So, thank you. So, uh, Judy. Um, thank you. Yesterday, I went to a marvelous lecture at SIL. You, know, I, you all know about SIL. And the fellow who spoke is an expert on climate change and what's going to be happening because <clears throat> sea level rise. Right. In fact, he made the statement, I hope I'm remembering correctly, by 2040, that's not that far away, there will be no beaches. You've probably heard these. Sure. Sorry. sure. Um, so I'm just wondering, what is the orientation of the county commission to doing things um, to assist in, as the speaker said, it's not, you can't turn back the clock, even if we stopped right. doing all the carbon production. Right. What we have to look at is adaptation, because sure. reversal is not going to happen. Right. So I'm thinking about what is the adaptation orientation of the county commission, thinking like raising road levels um, and so forth. I would recommend anybody to, you can get an audio recording of that presentation. It was really terrific through still. So I'm sorry, end of speech making. Could you tell me <laughs> of what, you know, is it talked about? What planning's going on? Well, uh... <laughs> I will tell you that uh, when I, my first strategic planning meeting, December, uh, after I took office in November, uh, I, you may or may not know this, but the FEMA flood maps have been newly adopted. Yeah. And they actually lower the base flood elevation in Sarasota County. Hmm. On Siesta Key by a foot, and in some places more than that. And so I thought it would be strategic that perhaps Sarasota mm -hmm. County would adopt a design <clears throat> flood elevation similar to the Holmes Beach, Brayton Beach, um, so that you would <clears throat> actually have add two feet, say, to the base flood elevation um, to make it more resilient, to make new construction more mm -hmm. resilient. Mm -hmm. um, staff, staff made a report and uh, <clears throat> presented it to the county commission and. Uh, uh, it was another one for a vote. Uh, and so um, uh, but but I, I was uh, looking
looking at the AI Florida website, and there is uh, a bill, actually two bills, one in the Senate, one in the House, that they're basically identical, that will allow uh, individuals and businesses to voluntarily raise, build a higher um, than the base flood elevation and not be penalized on building height because building height is is set at mm. the uh, flood elevation or, or at the Florida Building Code. Florida Building Code is one foot of freeboard above, uh, above it. So anyway, they, they have a bill going through there that, that will allow individuals, and I, and I, since it's in the House and the Senate, I'm hoping it's gonna go through. Um, so I'm watching that carefully uh, so that individual businesses and property owners because it's not just on the beach, it's also, well, as we yeah. saw with all the rain that we had in yeah. inland, uh, if you're on a, a pond or a lake or a river, uh, there's a good chance you're going to be flooded. Folks that never got flooded got flooded in this last hurricane. Mm -hmm. So resiliency, and as you may or may not know, uh, northern part of Sarasota County is higher than the southern part. And uh, and Charlotte County, last I heard, this is a while ago, doesn't have any evacuation shelters because they're all below flood. So, you know, something to think about. So we, <laughs> so we need to think about, and I, I brought this up to staff. Uh, we have to think about resiliency of the services, you know, county facilities and things like that, like the roads. Um, and 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 Dr. Tomasco, I don't know if you know Dr. David Tomasco. He heads up the Sarasota Bay Estuary Program. Well, uh, uh, the other commissioner who just came in here, uh, she wrote a beautiful piece. I thought she had written it. It was actually from Dr. Moscow, but she was brilliant. She is brilliant. But uh, this, this piece is on the rising water uh, that we're going to be experiencing isn't necessarily from uh, melting ice. It's actually from warmer water. And as we all remember from our science classes as children, as, as you heat water up, it expands and you know, eventually turns into steam. Uh, the rising seawater temperatures is causing the molecules to expand. And that's, what's, that's what we're dealing with, it's the warmer water. Um, so whatever your reason is for why you believe the water is warmer, whether it's man-made or God-made, it doesn't really matter, it's happening. So we have to, uh, another, uh, Kathy. Yeah, I got a question for you. Earlier, you had mentioned that um, the county is just a little bit farther behind the city right. regarding affordable housing. And I was wondering if you could just talk to what you think those reasons might be, or, you know, are there roadblocks, or how do you see, what do you see as the biggest obstacles, uh, or why that is? Um, just explain it a little bit. I'm just trying well, to understand that. Well, it, it has to do with, apparently, um, of a lawsuit or a threat of a lawsuit that if you if you require the government if the county requires affordable housing as part of the development then you have to make the developer whole and that means that they they can't lose money you know by by putting in that but what what the issue that i have with it is that if a if let's say a developer has a piece of property that has that's, that allows is let's say 13 units an acre and they want a special exception to a different zoning that would allow say 26 units an acre double the density then you can only ask at the time you could only ask for 50 percent of the difference yeah i guess i was more on wanting to know what the dip, you know, the, the city and the county, what is the, why is there? Well, I just I know mean, that, I just know trying to get it in the county, this is what I'm running. Oh, okay, okay, got it. I don't, the city apparently is smarter than us, and so they are going to get around it somehow. But uh, there also doesn't seem to be the urgency in the town. I mean, you all here uh, are living on top of each other. You know what I mean? We're, we, we're still spreading out. Once we get to be like Pinellas County, when everything is paved, then there'll be an issue in Sarasota County. But in, until we have that, um, 
I don't think there's a sense of urgency that we should have. Uh, Patrick, Mark, uh, real quickly, uh, based on your uh, career expertise as an architect, um, have you been attending the Sarasota Ar Architecture Sarasota series? Yes. Okay. I have a question related to that then. Um, we, we are, in fact, doing a workshop uh, based upon the results of that. And of course, that's focused on downtown Sarasota. But we want to look at what's next after that. And as an architect, obviously, uh, what we hear oftentimes from planners and architects is highest and best use. Right. Sure. Build as high as you can and cram as much as you can. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Let me, well, I agree. But, no, that's, but, that's but what one of the things we're looking at is how do you, as an architect, balance form over function and consider the human element in, in terms of the people that live there, the people that are around there. So can you give us some feedback from what you've seen from the presentation so far? You see something coming out of that that might give us some directions as to how we can help guide our city right. uh, in that area, uh, since they also have similar background experience, training, or tech, et cetera. Sure. <laughs> well, it's uh, that's a difficult question because it's very hard to legislate good taste, <laughs> and that's impossible. Uh, so you can write all the codes you want. Uh, as far as proportion, height, color, fenestration, all that wonderful stuff. And you still get, you know, point fingers at certain buildings downtown that aren't as people friendly as you might want them to be. So it, it um, there are good professionals and there are less good professionals. And so it, a lot has to do with the design team you put in place. Um, I, you know, Dwani, made an interesting observation and I was at the meetings when he was here originally. And so uh, I was anxious to hear what he thought about, you know, I felt like, you know, Dr. Frankenstein coming back and saying what he created. Uh, but no, I, I like downtown Sarasota, I could be wrong, but there's, uh, if, you, if you remember Sarasota 23 years ago when he was here, um, what we have, I was curious as if this is what he had in mind, you know, and uh, and not really to my surprise, <coughs> basically said it was, you know, what are you going to say, no? Uh, <laughs> the checks are already cleared. Uh, no, but, uh, but I do, I believe what makes Main Street Main Street is the scale. Uh, and, you know, thank God you all have saved Main Street. You know, I don't know for how long, um, but you know, because Sarasota, the city, is such a wonderful place to live, people want to keep coming. And so, that, you know, so what are you going to do? You want to drive them away? You know, I mean, I, uh, like I said, we're victims of our own success. But I would suggest, and you, you guys can't do it. Who you? Maybe you, if you decide to build another condominium. But just make sure that you hire good design professionals. You know, look at what they've done in the past. Um, and, and, and have to be receptive to their surroundings. Um, so that they're in scale uh, with both their neighboring buildings and, and the folks that are on the street. I mean, it's just, it's real important. Um, so, sorry. I, 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 we have limited time. I wanted to ask some things about mobility and transportation. So, Victor, go ahead. But um, When Duane spoke, he, he stressed the importance of people. Right. He stressed the importance of smaller units right. in order to attract people. Sure. Out there in beautiful, picturesque Sarasota County, out east. Right. Is that a, 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 one of the things that you're looking to do and to try to develop those smaller units? Well, we have a, a we have a, a half density unit that's on the books now, with 700, 750 square feet half unit, um, and it's been somewhat successful. We have one that's on Beneva. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go through yet. But what? But the problem is that you can have smaller units, but if you don't reduce the price, you know we haven't done anything affordable. We just made small units. So uh, it's a, you know, 
And uh, I lived in Atlanta for a number of years. Uh, and what, what I experienced there was that there was a building boom and then the market absorbed what was built. And then there was a shortage for a while and then another boom. Well, here in Sarasota, we haven't had, I mean, we seem to be on the accelerator all the time. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's they're, they just keep coming. You know, it's a little bit Fantasia, you know, Mickey Mouse in the basement with brooms. I mean, we're, 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 we're not catching up. And so I don't know if we're ever going to, I mean, I, eventually, you know, we've got to hit a, a point. Unfortunately, it's usually like recessions or something like that, that, you know, then everyone's hurting. And nothing's affordable because nobody has any money. So I, um, I would like to see some way uh, that we get into a contractual relationship with these folks that want to build out there so that they have to keep things affordable, much like the city for 30 years, 40 years or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, if it's only five years, uh, investors will buy them, wait the five years and then sell them at market. And so the families never get a chance. I'm not sure I answered your question, but it's it's a tough tough not to crack. What I, I'd like to focus on the transportation thing you and I sure. talked about yesterday, and that is um, again what the real opportunity to drive the economy in the city. We talked about the the number of units right. being developed and the concentrations being like at the quay or out east at the, uh, Maine and 301. Um, what from a process standpoint, help me, help us think we have a committee that's right. looking into this as far as our relationship with county and city staff. How, how would you, what kind of advice would you be providing as far as process of us interacting and trying to come up with some opportunities and solutions to this mobility? Well, I, I hopefully started the ball rolling when I met with Jonathan Lewis and told him, uh, you know, the FDOT uh, was willing to, you know, help us here. Um, and he had suggested to me that it should be a topic of discussion when the county and the city have a joint meeting here, whenever that is. Uh, I keep asking for it when it's going to get scheduled, and I haven't gotten it yet, but apparently it's very busy. The one I but, have, but that's that's but yeah. anyway, is, is the, the city and the county working together? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and and Jane Grog, the director of transit for Sarasota County, is a wonderful, uh, wonderful person. If you ever had a chance to meet her, uh, we just did the ribbon cutting for the trolley coming from SRQ to the downtown hotels, which I think is going to be a big success. Uh, so I, you know, when when we have that meeting. I, I would invite you all, perhaps, not all of you, uh, I'm wrong. <laughs> just you, David, no one else, uh, to show up and, and express, you know, express your thoughts and wishes. Because um, the need's there. I mean, you've, you've uh, given me all the graphs and the numbers, and, the, uh, and it's phenomenal. You know, it's phenomenal success, and it's scary at the same time, isn't it? Overwhelmingly wonderful. Yeah. But uh, well, let me let me close off. I, I I have had contact, and there is some discussion about sure. the uh, expansion of the zone for the sure. uh, on demand. Sure, is maybe a band aid or a test. So it's well, I don't know about so, a band aid. It works great. Yeah, but I I think smaller vehicles mm -hmm. scooting along. You know, it makes more sense if you just want to go. You know. Five blocks down the way, I'm not sure you need a on demand take you there. You really just need a scooter. Oh, those no, scooters are wonderful. Have you all got on those? No, of course not. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, with that, we're, we're going to pursue that and we'll okay. keep you in the loop and Super. Uh, see where this all takes us. But again, I think this idea of connectivity to make it whether it be a water taxi or uh, at least to I ride or sure. on demand kind of things, I think is a real opportunity as time has come. To Absolutely. Today. So, Absolutely. Well, I'm with you. Th thank you for coming. Well, thanks Appreciate for having it. me anytime. You're welcome to stick around or kind of scoot in. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, uh,
I'm, I'm, I'm the, okay. <laughs> right. This will allow you all to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Lawrence.